It's Rome and welcome to Homefront, the brand new family talk show where we're going to discuss a host of issues. Issues that would affect me, affect you, affect your family, affect Trinidad and Tobago and even the entire world. So welcome as we have some great discussions each and every day as you join us on Homefront. Now we know that the pandemic has been crazy. Who would have thought we would have been in a situation like this? Who would have thought we would have experienced a pandemic? I de definitely didn't see this coming. So I knew you didn't either. Now we know a lot of people are finding it difficult to cope in this time. So that's why we're going to have a lot of different specialists and professionals who are going to take us through day-by-day -day activities that can help you to cope with this pandemic in this difficult time. So we're going to be discussing issues that would affect kids, parents, adolescents, the elderly, caregivers, you name it. We are going to discuss it here on Homefront and we are going to answer everything and anything that you bring forward so today i am excited because this is our first episode and we have a great guest with us today we have with us a covid 19 survivor and she's also a social worker so help me to welcome to our first episode of home front miss claudia lika claudia welcome thank you for welcome having me home front. This thank is our, you on your home my pleasure to be here <laughs> thank you so much so claudia as we jump inside one time inside home front right yes you're a covid 19 survivor yes. and a social worker what advice would you have for our listening audience in terms of dealing and coping mechanisms in a time like this? Well, actually, uh, one of the first things I want to say is that having COVID helped me to recognize the immense amount of support I had or have, even in the health system. Because when I was actually admitted, I even forgot about being ill. I, I don't know if you believe me, but the kind of service that was provided for me, I was happy being at the hospital. It was Christmas time, and I was happy, including having the pastels. And you're not just saying that because I the Minister of Health watching us now. Definitely guy, not. Right? Right. I am not a person <laughs> like that at all. At all. It's the truth. Mm -hmm. It's the truth. Um, for persons having this kind of experience during this time, it could be very stressful. But one of the major things that I always encourage is to try to have as much support mm -hmm. as you can have. Family, friends, neighbors. Um, long ago, I mean, my hair is gray, so you'll understand where I'm coming from. Um, long ago, we had what we called a sense of community, where everybody was checking on everybody. Um, that has kind of waned a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I think because of COVID-19, we need to get that back on track people need people you understand that support that support, that support is of utmost importance it is what is helping a lot of people get through this pandemic because i know a lot of people talking about they being lonely and yes. because we can't go out That's and right. they're not getting to interact with others and it is really difficult because we know that human beings are social beings That's right. so you being a social worker in terms of somebody who is a socialite like myself yes. i i always looking for advice because i'm like i accustom them every weekend are out and about but now yes. i had to be cooped up at home mm -hmm. what advice would you give for a socialite like me well for a person who is always out, mm -hmm. it means that you need to become acquainted with your home in the sense that um, there are a lot of things that you can probably do at home that you have not had time to do. I don't know if you have pets. I don't know have if you plant, have... Have a plant. Have a plant. Well, wonderful. <laughs> you need to begin taking care of that plant. Right, right. Right? Uh, fertilizer, nourishing the plant. The same way we be engaging and uh, nourishing ourselves, we need to take care of those plants. Um, thankfully, we have uh, different ways of communicating. Um, you have FaceTime, you have WhatsApp, so you can chat with your friends and family without even having to leave the house. Mm -hmm. Have healthy communication, have celebrations. I celebrated uh, my cousin's birthday via Zoom there in the States. So we have many different ways that we could begin to engage each other without leaving the home. Right. And for me as well, and I don't know if you at home experiencing this, is that for me, I'm learning to spend time with myself, That's learning right. to understand myself, the things that I would like, the things that I wouldn't like, and learning to just be comfortable in my own space by myself That's without right. having all of these people around me all of the time in terms of distractions. Sometimes we get lost in that whole matrix of people yes. that we get lost and we lose ourselves and who we really are, what we really like, and the things that we really are interested in. Yes. So I like that, uh, that advice as yeah, well. Yeah, because... Um 
because COVID-19 came upon us, we recognize that families, some of them don't know how to engage each other at home. Mm -hmm. They're so busy with the activities of, of daily life that now uh, persons are required to be at home, to be in the same space. They do not know what to do. Mm. That's the reality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't just pick up and go to the bar no, anytime no, wifey no, you can't. and you're in an argument. Exactly. You have to stay there and deal with you it. Get to know your spouse. Uh, yes. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. So let's dive a little bit into your experience with COVID-19 in terms of, you, I heard that you had difficulty with your breathing and all yes. of that. So yes. how was that experience? I, I heard that you were at the Coover facility. That's right. How long were you there and what was that experience like? Okay, so when I was initially diagnosed, I was allowed to be at home, mm -hmm. um, quarantine at home. Um, one of the things I must say is that I got a call every single day at a particular time. I found that was excellent. And eventually, um, there was one day um, on the 23rd of December, I remember it because it was my brother's birthday. I began recognizing that I have to stop ever so often and inhale deeply, which is not the norm. So when I got the call, I told them about it. Now I want to encourage persons, please be honest about how you feel. Because if I was trying to hide mm -hmm. how I felt, I may have just stayed at home. I would not have gotten the care that I needed. And I may not be here talking to you. Because that's what I was not going to ask you. Weren't you afraid to even admit yourself to even get the test for COVID-19? Because no. I know a lot of people at home may be ill. Yes. And they will be thinking, boy, I don't know if I have this thing, but I'm afraid to go to the hospital. What would you have to say to those people? Now, if we're thinking about preserving life, we need to do what is required to ensure life is preserved. One of the things is the... the the Ministry of Health kept saying, if you have flu-like symptoms, get yourself tested. If you have flu-like symptoms, do not go to work. Right. So I know that I did not uh, place my colleagues at risk because as soon as I felt ill, I subjected myself to being tested. Now the actual test is not comfortable. But it had to be done, right? Right. It had to be done. And I was diagnosed with COVID on December 17th, uh, taken to, admitted to Kuva on December 23rd, and I was discharged on December 28th. So Christmas for me was, was at the hospital. Oh. Yes, so it they, was nice. they gave you a, pa a pastel. And I got and pastels, and I got <laughs> apples, I got pineapples. Well done, Kuva. Well done, Kuva. That's well right. Done, Kuva. I give them kudos excellent care excellent service and i'm not just saying it because i'm on air right yeah okay okay i do appreciate that um and in terms of long covid yes now i am not too familiar with long covid but yes. i heard that there could be effects after you you survived covid months later so tell us a bit yeah. about long COVID. well from i could only talk about my experience um i started having um some shortness of breath even after I was discharged, mm -hmm. uh, meaning okay to go back out to work. But reflecting, I think it may have been a combination of things, including the fact that I was a bit anxious about going back into the public domain, right? Um, I also started having some knee pain. My left knee was swollen and mm. paining. When I went to my clinic, um, I was told that uh, COVID also affects your joints. So one of the things I must say as well, coming out of the hospital, I didn't clean my home for however long, and I decided I was going to clean. So Rome, I mopped the house, and I had to sleep for two hours. Wow. Fatigue. Uh, so, I'm seriously so fatigued. Fatigue. Fatigued, yes. And, and as we, 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 we experience in these things, I know that mindfulness is a big part in terms of self-rejuvenation, yes. in terms of working on yourself, in terms of bringing calm, that calm sense of, of, of you not being, your brain not going all over the place. Yes. So we want to jump inside a segment that we call the Mindfulness Minute right now. So we're going to take a deep breath all together. 
Breathe in, breathe out. Let's go to our mindfulness. Mindfulness is about being in the present moment. Although it sounds simple, it's not necessarily easy to do because our mind has a way of dwelling on things that happened in the past or getting worried, anxious, stressed out about things that haven't happened yet. And so mindfulness is really the practice to be here now. Notice what it's like to just sit in your chair. Notice the sounds that you might be hearing around you. You can pause and notice what it feels like to breathe. Something that we're doing all the time that we don't pay attention to. And when we practice being mindful, we're able to relax the body, we're able to calm the mind, we're able to think more clearly. So remember to be here now. So that was our mindfulness minute. So join us every day so you could participate as well and join us as we take you on that journey of calm, peaceful serenity. So Claudia, I want to thank you very much for joining us. This is the first time I've spoken to a COVID-19 survivor Wonderful. and a social worker in one. You and you are better. our pioneer in terms of home front. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so guys, we want to remind you about the PED Cares Foundation. Now the PED Cares Foundation supports the pediatric hospital and the pediatric emergency unit at the Mount Hope Hospital itself. So the PED Cares Foundation partners with schools and organizations both locally and internationally and they actually train doctors, nurses and paramedics. So we want you to go and donate to the PED Cares Foundation because a little goes a long way for the future generation. We're going to make sure and take care of our kids. And right now, I want you to pick up your phone and give me a little selfie, a selfie video. So in this selfie video, you are going to ask us some questions. Any questions that you may have when it comes to life, when it comes to medical issues, whatever it may be, right? Send your videos to us or your video questions to the email address on your screen and we are going to get our specialists to answer these questions. So guys, thank you very much for joining us. This has been Homefront. I am Rome. Catch you tomorrow, same time, same place.